and all the students present here, everybody here, I am sure all of you are very eager to know the results of the debate and you don't want to listen to boring speeches from senior officials. But I'll still say my two words. As an aside, sir, Anu ma'am and I, we both went to the same college. And we were both deba debaters in the college. And Anu ma'am was an inspiration for me to get through the service also. As her face was all over, the, you know, when I started preparing for it, she was all over in all the magazines and everywhere. And I sort of followed her journey too. So that's just an aside. And for all of you, actually, we are all used to seeing uh, senior government officials and representatives in this hall. It's a pleasure to see young people looking very earnest. And the energy is different. Even though you're just waiting for the results and you don't want to, there is an energy. Do you know whenever social transformation has happened in a dramatic manner in whichever part of the world, do you know that the youth have driven it? All of you must be knowing. They have either led it or they have driven it in large numbers. Social transformation can never happen without the youth participating in it. Today, as you see, the digital revolution is happening. Who is driving it? It's that young person in villages across India, across the world, who is sitting and who is on social media, who is on the internet, young women who want to get onto the internet, who want to know what's happening. So transformation always happens by the youth. And I'm very glad that all of you have taken time off to debate on this very important subject. I'm, I'm happy that this subject was chosen even by the organizers and young people thought it fit to participate in it. This is SDG 5 which is empower all women and girls. That's the aim. And you know the key word in this is empower. And you have to get that right, empower. Empower is not equivalent to finance. Empower may not be equivalent to a position or a post. It's a very different thing. And if you get it right, you know the trick for it. And because I represent Mission Shakti, I will say two minutes about this very, very important initiative of the government of Orissa. It was the brainchild of Honorable Chief Minister. And as Manoj mentioned before, uh, Chief Minister has been mentioning in all his speeches that women's empowerment is not a slogan for him. It is a governance ethos. It's, as you say in corporate terms, it's a very key vertical for the government of Orissa. And uh, we, I think we've done well and we've come a long way, mainly because we did not equate empowerment with just finance. He start a business, get some money, there's income flowing and the woman is empowered. That is one part of empowerment of women. What the government of Odisha did differently, led by Honorable Chief Minister, is, you know, in a state like Odisha, as in many other states, engagement with government gives you a lot of power. So there is an active and structured engagement of women with the government of Odisha. We are probably the only state in the country where there is a cabinet directive to every department to see what kind of activities can women do within that department. And it's not necessarily profit oriented. So what happens is women get a toehold into government offices. Women can walk into BDO offices, into collector's offices, in, in state government. In fact, right now, today is our grievance day. I have met at least 20, 30 women SAG leaders who come with their grievances. And on, in a routine manner, they meet Honorable CM and go back. So when you have an engagement with the collector of your district, when he calls you for a meeting or she calls you for a meeting, it's very difficult to go back and then sit on discussions on dowry or to become the subject or the victim of domestic violence because the entire community knows she's met Honorable Chief Minister last week and he's called her for a meeting. So engagement is with government is what we do differently. Whenever any policy or scheme is announced or any initiative, we see where do the Mission Shakti leaders, where do the women of Odisha fit in? Can they play a part in just dissemination? Do they have a role in actual work in that scheme. So that is something that you could study, you know, later on, but which is a very different thing. It's not just giving a bank loan and setting up a business and then letting her be the way she is. And that is why I believe when we talk of 33% reservation, in Odisha, in the local body elections, if you see across board, it is almost 60% and above. You see from our leaders who are in Zilla Parishads, almost 21 Zilla Parishads are headed by women out of 30. You see our Panchayat Samitis, you see the ward members and all these women, most of them come through a process of leadership. It's not just being somebody's wife or a politically influential family that puts them there. 
They have been leaders in their own right, which makes them all the more effective. And that's why there are these very interesting anecdotes, you know, when you talk of empowerment, I mean, Manoj and others know it because I say it in every, um, uh, every stage that I go to. When Honorable CM was interacting with a group of women from Ganjam and he was saying, do you get water and do you get, uh, are your roads clean and is this happening or not? An elderly lady just caught his hand and said, uh, um, we have all that. But wait, you've given us something that we've never had in our life. You've given us Parichet an identity. We are someone because of this scheme of yours, or because we meet you, because of Mission Shakti. So Parichai equals empowerment, identity. She's not just somebody who is cooking in her house and nobody else knows about her. Now we have this chain of Mission Shakti cafes across the block. You visited a Milik Shakti cafe where women who have traditional skills in cooking are now turning it into a business with Odia cuisine being the center stage. So when the district judge comes and eats at your place, when the local police officials comes and has a meal or they, you cater for them, it's a different ball game. You're not just spending your whole life being somebody's wife or somebody's daughter. So these are the kind of empowerment things that young people should think of and I'll be very interested to know what your solutions are and I'll expect the team to share it with me and uh, all the best to all of you, to the winners and to everybody else who participated, march on and it's a very very important thing to which we should not just give lip service to. Empower all women and girls is a very important part for our, for our country, for our society, for our state, for wherever you work in, for corporates which you will join later on. So all the best to all of you. Thank you.